OK, great. Thanks, Pal and Manuel for the invitation. So as you were saying, it's, it was an exciting couple of weeks for Review Pro. Um, I founded the company in, well, we had the idea originally in 2008. So any of you that are starting companies and hoping to get rich overnight, forget about that. It takes a long time. Um, uh, we had the idea for Review Pro in 2007, and we started coding in 2008. And it, it was a startup that's not exactly following the normal path in the sense that I was working in Grupo Planeta. I was working as the CEO of digital media. Had the idea. Uh, Tim and Dimitri had worked uh, for me on another project. They're the other two founders. And uh, for the first year and a half, I, was the, I funded the project. And Tim and Dimitri were working during the days. I was helping at night and on weekends. But we started in the most bootstrapped garage style possible. And it was a project that, from the beginning, was data driven, right? The, the original thesis was, which now is fairly obvious, but at the time was far from obvious, was that uh, reviews, so that, again, this is 2007, uh, what we believe that user generated content in general was going to have a huge impact on businesses, right? And uh, we had an interest to, to we like business models that were built on aggregation. So it was data aggregated from multiple sources. And the way that we got to the idea of Review Pro was really a process of reverse engineering, if you will. It was, uh, we knew we didn't want to get into the B2C space. You know, we didn't want to compete with a, a, a Flickr, a blogger, or any of these other social media uh, user-generated content platforms. But what we wanted to do was build value on top of user-generated content in a B2B environment. So that was sort of the genesis. So we started the company. Um, as I said, uh, we started coding in January 2008. Our first client we signed in uh, September of 2009. And today we have over 30,000 hotels around the world. We have a run rate uh, of revenue of over 10 million US dollars. And it's a company that was built on very, very little capital. Um, in total, we had a total of 5.5 million in, uh, in equity investment. And today we have, as I said, 30,000, more than 30,000 hotels uh, around the world. So we're a, we're a big data company. And I'm not a big data specialist. I'm not a data scientist. So if anyone asks detailed questions, I'll have to defer them to someone else who's much smarter than me. But what I can explain is that we're a big data company that makes things really simple, right? We don't, um, and in our comp set, and in oftentimes in, in, in many areas, um, the problems or the solutions that companies bring to the market, they're just too fucking complex, right? Nobody understands them, right? People, especially, well, most industries, but especially the hotel industry, things need to be really simple. They need to be applied. Um, last night was a Super Bowl. I didn't watch it. I was too tired. But for those of you who watched, uh, in American football, there's a classic saying, blocking and tackling. You know, great teams, they block and tackle really well. Blocking and tackling is, do, like in football terms, it's like the most boring stuff, right? So what I think we did really well as a company in general, as an analytics company, as a company that's specializing in text analytics, is we didn't try to go after solving tomorrow's complex, you know, sort of surrealistic, surreal problems. We focused on the blocking and tackling of solving the problems that our clients had today. Right? So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about, um, very, very briefly, uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you have heard of Review Pro? OK. So again, as I said, we're a B2B software as a service company that's focused on, I say the hospitality industry because we offer solutions for both hotels and restaurants, but the vast majority of our revenue comes from, from the hotel industry. And the news that was announced a few weeks ago is, I wouldn't tell you the numbers except for it was the company that acquired us was a publicly traded company, so this is all public, but they acquired 80% of the company for 35 million euros. So, you know, it's not Google, it's not Social Point, but for our investors, it was an amazing return. For the founders, it changes our lives forever. And for the team that shared in the, um, that shared in the employee pool, it's significant, right? So by all accounts, from our standards, it was a huge success. And, um, but that's a success to now. There's still a future, and there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I've signed on for uh, the, the medium long term in the sense that, um, you know, we, we believe that there's a huge project ahead of us. And the company that acquired us is Shiji. It's even people in the hotel industry, almost nobody's heard of Shiji. And it's a multi-billion dollar uh, tech, hotel tech, 
technology company based in China that focuses just on the hotel industry. So it's kind of the biggest company nobody had ever heard of, founded by a very entrepreneurial, um, um, interesting guy in the 80s who was a rocket scientist that basically started working in data and systems and built this multi-billion dollar company. So they've acquired 80% of our company and so we're still, still shareholders of 20% and that besides the great project, besides the change in the industry, what motivates us in addition is the value that we can create for Shiji and for ourselves over the next, um, the next years, right? So Review Pro, it's a B2B software as a service company focused on the hospitality industry and what we do is, if you look here, our products are, and this is where we started, online reputation management. When we started, that was a really big deal. Like, hotels were tracking TripAdvisor and the many, many other sources. They were tracking all this stuff by themselves manually. So when we started, online reputation management was interesting, relevant, and compelling as a value proposition in, of, in and of itself. But as happened in our space, and many of you are familiar with this, you can't stand still. You know, what's value one day is ultimately a commodity, right? So you have to keep evolving, keep adding value. So while online reputation management is, is still very, very important, um, we launched a guest survey tool, which, uh, how many of you in the last year stayed at a hotel and filled out a, a, a survey when you left? A couple, well, maybe 10 in the whole room. Okay, I travel probably more than any five of you can come together. And I never fill them out. But it turns out that lots of people fill these forms out. It's, it's, it's amazing. It tends to correlate to the average night stay. So in a typical four-star city center hotel, between 8 and 12% of the people fill out these surveys. And if you're in a, you know, let's say an Ibero Star Grand whatever hotel in the Caribbean, up to 31% of people fill out these surveys. So there's a tremendous amount of information, that both quantitative and qualitative data, that can be mined through text analysis. So basically, we started with this prod product, online reputation management, and what we realized was that was a piece of the puzzle, but it wasn't the puzzle. The puzzle was guest intelligence, all feedback from all channels to help our clients, whether it's an individual hotel or uh, a very, very large chain, to be able to understand how and where to focus operational and service excellence to deliver better guest experiences. Because in the end, this is what the hotel industry is. It's not much more complicated. Over here, you've got an asset that someone wants to maximize the value of. And the way you do that is exceeding expectations by delivering exceeding, expecta exceeding expectations by delivering uh, fantastic experiences operationally in service and related to the product. So we started here, and then the market started getting competitive, and we thought, OK, we need to be smarter than the next guy, so what are we going to do? So we, put, we developed this enterprise-grade uh, survey tool, and we created a category that we call guest intelligence, right? And it's really simple. Hoteliers can understand this. It's like, who doesn't want to have more intelligence about their guests, right? So this guest intelligence, uh, and then we, we launched another product, which is kind of mapping online reputation to, um, to revenue numbers, so they can see how do they compare versus their, their comp set, right? But so basically, uh, and then we have an API, and we make the data available to, we sell to hedge funds. This is a, the wildest client we have. We have a hedge fund. If, most, does anyone know what a hedge fund is? Most, okay, so a hedge fund is a fund that just invests in a lot of stuff. And these are like the tops of their class in Harvard and here and there that have billions of dollars. And they invest here and they buy here. And they turn billions into multiple billions. And what this hedge fund does is they, they invest heavily in hotel stocks and heavily in um, um, <clears throat> the online travel space, and so they use our data as a part of their analytics, right? So basically, you know, whether it's selling data to our clients, um, you know, through API to hedge funds to hotel owners or to destinations, if you go to Australia, for example, the National Star Rating System uses our data as one of the components to rank hotels, right? So basically, this is this is um, sort of the landscape of what we do as a company, right? So. The data that we generate is, um, where it started here is with online reputation. And everyone knows about TripAdvisor. Everyone knows about a handful of online travel agencies. But it turns out that there's 175 of them around the world that, you know, some of them, Expedia, TripAdvisor, a number of them are relevant on a global basis. But many of them are very, very relevant on a, on a national basis. So, for example, Germans, Germans don't read TripAdvisor or aren't influenced as highly by TripAdvisor as they are by Holiday Check or HRS or other sites, right? So there's a tremendous amount of data here 
um, you know, from the point scores, but more importantly from the reviews. And then as I said, we launched this guest survey tool. So you know, whether it's before the stay, during the stay, or post checkout, our clients, the hotels, can send surveys. They can send them through text message, through uh, scanning a QR code, or mainly through the old boring method of sending an email. And we're generating tens of millions of, of, of inputs and um, text analytic um, opportunities for our clients, right? So we combine these two types, of, these two products, these two types of da data into a, um, a tool and a, uh, or basically a web application and also a mobile app. So for us, text mining is, is, is a key part of our value proposition, right? We're offering text mining today in 16 languages. And we developed this, um, again, if you're trying to put context and, um, and framework and recommendation to the entire internet or a, a space much bigger than ours, it's very, very complicated. But fortunately for us, it's a little bit easier because we're just focusing on hotels and all the rele relevant terminology and concepts. But basically, this gives you an idea of what our dashboards look like. So our clients can, over a period of time, look at all the positive and negative comments. We look at categories, what are the best, what are the worst. Um, a concept is a sub, you know, a group of concepts creates a category. And then uh, what we're doing, again, is ho being a hotelier is very simple. It's understanding where you're under underperforming. And you know, maybe it's the breakfast doesn't have the right options for Chinese visitors. Or maybe it turns out that you know, the check-in times are too slow. Or uh, a hotel is, to put it in car terms or driving terms, a hotel is it's a sea of potholes of potential operational and service problems. And what we do through the text and the text analytics is a really, really key part of how we help our clients understand and know themselves better, but also know about their clients. So as I said, we have 30,000 hotels around the world. Uh, I, uh, probably virtually all is a little bit of an overstatement, but almost all the major chains in, in Spain and independent chains work with us. And we're also very fortunate to work with many, many important brands around the world. And I, I can't say who it is now, but we just signed uh, one of the top global brands in the US. We just signed and we're implementing right now uh, nearly 500 hotels um, throughout Europe and EMEA. So as a little company that started in Barcelona with three guys and no money, you know, you can do this stuff. If you stay focused and if you Focus on adding value and don't try to solve next year's problems or two years from now problems. Solve the, do the blocking and tackling, solve problems today and figure out how to drive marketing leads and convert it and, and you can build a business, right? So I'm going to skip over this in the spirit of time, but for those of you that travel and book hotels, you know that reviews are important, right? It's a huge determining factor on choosing not only between hotel A and B, but helping both individual and business travelers decide how much they're willing to pay. So there's a direct relationship between the, um, the online reputation score, or what we call our global review index score, and, a, and, the, and the average daily rates a hotel can charge. Um, another thing that we did, um, I wish I could say that we were so clever to figure out the value of this. We didn't. It just turned out to be good, good fortune. Uh, we partnered with Cor uh, Cornell University, which in the hospitality industry is the top university in the world. Um, they did a study about four years ago that looked at the relationship of our global review index, our, our online ranking, uh, or our, our online reputation score, and revenue. And it literally put us on the, on, on, on the, on the map globally for hoteliers that want to know their GRI score. Right? So again, as you're, if you've got projects where you're looking at data, um, try to look at how that data can be, um, be a part of some bigger picture. Like how can you create data that every CEO wakes up in the morning and is like, fuck, I want to see what that number is. You know what I mean? It makes a really big difference, right? And it's not, you can have the best product in the world, but if you're not getting visibility, and a lot of times that visibility when you're a small company, it's hard to get on your own. You need to, you need to partner with other people or get the validation of someone who's already uh, of reference in, in the market. So basically what happens or what happened along the way is hotels, you know, they sell a big part of their distribution through online travel, right? So they learn this lesson on, the, on their own, that the higher your score, your ranking in booking.com, the higher you can, the more you can charge, and the, and, and, and the more rooms you fill, the lower your, uh, the, you have higher occupancy. And so, um, we, again, we were lucky because the, the changes in distribution helped the market to learn that what we were doing was very, very important and valuable, right? And so what hoteliers know is that the battle is won or lost 
by their ability to exceed expectations. And the text analytics is, is the most powerful way for a hotel to do this. And so, <clears throat> again, uh, I'll skip over this quickly, but it, if you want to improve, it starts with measuring and benchmarking, right? It, it, and, and then you can focus on where to improve. So these surveys, so we, we get the information from the, um, the online reviews, but the surveys are, 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 um, are driving a tremendous amount of the text um, analytics that we're doing as well, right? And then we're mashing this information from the trip advisors and the bookings of the world with the information that comes in from, from their direct reviews. But in the end, what, what the output of this and why this is so much, uh, why, why this is so relevant and valuable to, uh, again, from individual hotels all the way up to some of the biggest brands in the world is, you know, it gives them a way to focus on how they can increase guest satisfaction. By doing that, um, and also we link our, our surveys to make it very easy for, for someone to, to afterwards write a review in TripAdvisor or Google or Booking. Um, sorry, not Booking because Booking is another path, but many of the channels. And so um, what we're doing is helping them focus on how to increase guest satisfaction, drive review volume, which also has a positive impact of how they rank on these sites. Um, and then ultimately drive revenue, right? And this was what the Cornell study did, which was, like I said, for us, it was like literally marketing gold. Cornell University says, hey, if you can increase your global review index score, which the only one in the world that has that was us, what, if you can increase it one point, that correlated to almost a 1.42% increase in rev par, which if you don't work in the hotel industry, don't worry about it, but trust me, it's important, right? So, um, so again, it all comes down to text analysis about how can we help, how can we help hotels to really drill down to like, let's call it the, the, the atomic level of where and how they need to focus their improvement, right? So again, so I mean, this is very basic, um, but just to put context, you know, you, you have um, the positive and negative sentiment. We're not doing neutral sentiment uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, so then a mention is, is a phrase, right? The staff were gracious, right? And the concept of staff and the sentiment is either positive or negative, right? And so again, simplicity in what we do, maybe in other areas it's different, but in what we do, simplicity of you know, how, how you're doing categories, how visually uh, what the, the, the user interface is, how um, you know, um, when someone that's working at a front desk in a hotel that's really busy and has a new group coming in, how, they ca how can they come and look in Review Pro, either on, their, on, on their, their, their computer or on their mobile device, and in seconds see where the, what the key issue is in. So simplicity is really cr uh, critical. And, um, and so we, we did a lot of work on how we structure the information to make it as simple as possible and make it as let's call it proactive or as obvious about where they need to focus the, the, the action, right? So, um, so how do we do what we do? The, the, the dictionary has 450, uh, now it may be up to nearly 500 concepts, right, related to the hospitality industry. So those are hotel, restaurants, and some other, but all related to our domain space. Um, and then the concepts are organized into uh, 26 uh, standard categories. As I said, 16 languages, um, and there's, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of new reviews per day. So the, as you can, uh, we work with Rackspace, and Rackspace is, I think they're very happy with us, and it's, uh, it's, the data processing behind this is, is significant, right? So uh, a few examples about how customers are leveraging what we're doing. So one of the problems with, with hotels, as in many businesses, there's just too much data, right? There's too many reports, there's too many screens, there's too much shit floating around that nobody has time to figure out what to do with it. And so what happens is hotels, it's pretty simple. Like if you work in F&B and food and beverage, you just care about what's going on in the restaurants. You don't care about if the spa, if the towels stink or if the, you know, if the pool has uh, got algae or whatever. You just care about F&B, right? And if you work in... Um, if you were working the front desk, then again, there's certain things. So what we did was all this information in online reputation, all this information in the guest surveys, what we did is we put it together in these department or, or functional area reports. And, and we tie the semantic analysis into those reports. So what happens is, you know, if you were the VP of food and beverage for Hard Rock Hotel, we just signed Hard Rock Hotels, by the way, um, then you would be able to have on your phone every morning 
a list of um, what the new things are, you know, uh, for your area. Okay, if you want to know what's going on in the rest of the hotel, you, a couple clicks away. But the, but, but the idea is you know, to tie the synthesis um, and, and this sentiment analysis to each functional area in reporting alerts and, and also reports to empower people to do things, um, you know, in a, make it obvious, make it almost impossible for them not to improve, right? So again, it's you know, the obvious, focusing on strengths and weaknesses, right? So this just gives you a little bit of an idea. You know, so a concept could be in the rooms, noise, uh, related to the air conditioning, um, the, the windows, the balcony. And so what happens is the way we do this, if you look at the high level, it's really, really basic. And then if you click down a level, then you can get more detail. And within three clicks, you can actually get to the review and read the review that, you know, I can't even see this one, it's too small for my eyes. But so you're, from the highest level with the general category issues, with three clicks, you can read the exact review and you can actually respond to the person that wrote the review directly in the tool. So again, um, value needs to be around um, synthesizing lots of information, putting it into a context that really adds value for the end user, the end user in our case is a hotelier, and make it really easy for them to apply that and turn this insight, this data or this text mining analytics into action very, very simply where they can actually see the results of it, right? So another thing we do is, so you can, we, can, we analyze by department, but we also analyze by nationality. Um, we do the same thing, well, it wasn't there, uh, by nationality, but also language, right? So you, you can see, in this case, you can see, um, you know, um, I don't know, German, Swiss, and I suppose there's another country here that, um, you know, where, there, where there's German speakers. So you can see it by, you can do it, see it by nationality, but then you can go to the other view and you can see all German speakers from anywhere in the world, right? So it, it makes it very helpful and useful when um, a hotelier is trying to modify the experience for a segment, a, a national segment that's of importance to them to have this uh, text analytics available in that structure. Um, the other thing is by review site, or review source. As I said before, there's 175 online travel agencies and review sites. They're, they're not all created equal, neither in terms of volume or in terms of influence. So what happens is we break down our global review index is a, is, a, is a number, it's the online reputation based off the quantitative score of all of these sites, but we have, a, we have what we call a, um, a source index, which is like the GRI, it's a quantitative in, index for each source. But we also do the same thing with a, with a sentiment analysis. So here, again, if booking.com for most hotels is very important, you're always like three clicks away from seeing all the specific positive and negative reviews related to booking. So again, simplicity is, is really key. Um, the other thing <clears throat> is, as I said, we have two different sources. We have the online reviews um, and then also uh, the, the surveys. The online reviews, this is in the public domain, right? So all this amazing insight that can be gathered about Palladium Hotels is a client of ours, right? So if Abel Matutes wants to see what's positively and negatively impacting his hotels, the good news is he can see that for his hotels, but he can also see it for all of his competitors. So there's a tremendous amount of value that, um, that, that comes um, from the competitive analysis on the online reputation space, so, or on the online reputation side. Obviously the surveys, so if Melly is a client of ours and their survey results and the semantic analysis for that is only available to them, right? So part of the data is public, available to everyone, but again, you can see tremendous detail. You know, here, I don't know if you can see this, but the, the, this is actually real data. I, I don't know what the period of time was, but basically it's just showing you know, the hotel name, the summary of the, the text, uh, text mining and showing related to value, who had positive, more positive and negative. So again, most of our clients, this data is used in their, in their board meetings. You know, if you look at all the big operators in, in Mallorca that, um, you know, three or four years ago, um, or three or four years ago, seven years ago, our data they, they'd never even heard of. Now our data they're reading in their monthly and their quarterly board meetings is a key part of their reporting and internal metrics. And, um, and we have around the world, there's tens of thousands, I, I don't think it's quite 20,000, but somewhere between 15 and 20,000 individuals, a part of their bonus is based on our data, right? So again, if, if your data, you, you need to figure out ways to get your data to, to be visible to the right people, but also make it a part of their internal metrics and their, their, their internal reporting because 
if you don't start with competition, it'll, it'll soon come. So you need to kind of find these ways to, to, to make it very difficult to unseat you. So, and then also what we're finding is more and more of our clients are using, um, and I'll wrap up here in just a minute. Um, they're using uh, insight from the uh, text mining or semantic analysis to help guide their, their copy and their marketing messages, right? So again, this is on a high level. Um, but as you click down and you can drill down, marketers can see what are the things that people are already talking positively about, right? And adapt their copy in their websites or their, their keyword strategy to include these concepts. So again, thanks so much to be here. I think um, I met Powell and he told me about this organization. I had no idea there'd be so many people here. So I think what you guys are doing for the community and creating this environment is fantastic. And it was an honor to have the chance to be here. So thanks.